All right, so we are recording. All right, guys, welcome to week five. This is a bonus week for anybody who is a lead consultant and above. And we're super excited to bring you some practical tips and tricks and just hard work effort. So you can not only um, be successful, but you can build a massive business. Um, and if you guys are watching this and you haven't watched weeks one through four, we highly suggest that you do that ASAP because I'm going to tell you if y'all text any of us about parties, about recruiting, or about leading, or about forms, you're going to get cut. I'm just kidding. You're not going to get cut, but we're literally going to send you the playlist to guide you growth. Okay. So we really need for you guys to do your part. And if you, if you've missed weeks, you really need to go back and watch. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to mute myself. Ray Ray is going to, um, start this thing off. So I'm going to spotlight her. And as always, if you have questions, ask in the text box, but actually we are going to have questions from you guys if you filled out the form so stay tuned we'll do that at the end all right right all right guys so i am going to be talking about training up your people from day one okay um first of all before we get into that i really 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 want to stress the importance of being a leader um if you do not plan on leading your teamies, your frontline, your downline from the start, then you really don't need to be recruiting. Like it needs to be said because I, we all see it happen. I know you guys see it happen. Your downline, your frontline, they're not leading their teams or they're making excuses for why they're not leading. And uh, it's, it's a problem. It really is. It's not fair to that person who is joining Sensi because they're joining Sensi. They're looking at you as a mentor. They're joining you, okay? They're not just joining Sensi. So if you straight off from the get-go are like, look, I don't want to lead. I don't want to be a leader. I don't want people under me. I don't want people texting me, looking up to me, coming to me, asking questions. That's okay. Perfectly fine. But you need to admit it and you need to let your sponsor know that from the beginning because you can take a non-leadership role, okay? So that's the first thing I want to say. Um, if you do want to be a leader, guys, being a leader is more than just tagging someone in a post on your team page, okay? It's more than, you know, having someone, you know, we get that email saying, so-and-so just joined your team. Yay! So exciting, right? I still get excited when someone joins my team. And, but you're not going to, Success isn't going to come to them by going to the pinned post on your director's page or your team page and you just tagging them in it. No, you have to build that connection. You need to either get face to face if you're local with them. If you're not, FaceTime with them or even just get on the phone with them. It doesn't have to be this long drawn out thing. It can be for 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Personally, what I do is as soon as someone hits join, I'm like, hey, look, we're getting you to a shooting star. That's the first thing I say. I ask them, what do you want out of this business? If they're say, hey, I want to make as much money as possible. All right, let's go. If they say, hey, I'm here just for the rewards. Okay, I'm going to train them a little bit differently. I'm going to back off a little bit more. Because you never know, that could change. I was, I was one of the ones that wanted to make, what, 100 bucks from the beginning, hoping I would make 100 bucks, but I was really in it to get some rewards for myself. And look at me now. So that can change. But you don't want to run someone away. So tagging is not leading. We all see it. So I really just want to like, I'm going to say it again. Tagging is not leading, okay? Yes, tag people. But that should not be your only means of training someone, okay? It should not. So the first thing I really want to, well, the next thing I really want to say is you have to add value to your director's team page. Because guess what? not just your director's team page, it's your team page. Listen, your director doesn't need a team page. At the end of the day, we don't need team pages. They're not mandatory. They're here to help you. They're here to help your teenies, your newbies, your downline, okay? It's, it's to help everybody. And at the same time, guys, when personally, when I have frontline or downline post in 
technically my group because I created it, right? Even though it's not mine, I don't take ownership over that group. I learn from them. So don't think that you have you don't have anything to share. Okay. So as a leader, you need to be showing up on your director's page. Why? Because your downline is looking at you, your frontline is looking at you. If they don't ever see you post, they are never going to feel like they have anything to offer and to share. Okay. So you have to be the one to make that step. If you are making that step and you still don't see your teamies posting, reach out to them and say, hey, I saw you posted that mail out you did on your story. Do you mind going live or sharing it in our, on our team page? Offer that opportunity to them so they can take that step because they might not think they have something to, sh to share. Okay, it ha it's happened a lot. And I've literally had one of my frontline who is a freaking rock star in PRV and recruiting. She's gonna be my next director, Sarah. She's probably on here. Um, when she first joined, she was messaging me like all of these amazing things she was doing in her business. And I was like, hey, please share that to Roots. Please share it because it's not only benefiting me, it could benefit so many other people in our team page, in our group. And she's like, oh, really? I didn't think that was. That was worth sharing. Absolutely. It is absolutely worth sharing. Anything you do, small, big, little, whatever, share it. Okay. Literally, I put some stuff together today for teamies and for customers. Literally, just take a picture of it. Show them that you're working. That's it. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant. Okay. When you show up, they're going to show up. All right. Next, if you see someone in your downline, who is not showing up as a leader, you need to step up to the plate, okay? Because listen, um, my group personally, I think we're at like 450 people. There's no way that I can personally train 450 people. There's no way, no way. My first priority is going to be my frontline, the ones that want it, the ones I see working, but I do work with other downline other people in my downline. But at the end of the day, like I can't work with 450 people. I would literally go insane. I would literally go insane. So take that initiative and step up to the plate. Okay. Look in your downline. That helps us out. No, even you as one person can't work with every single person in your group. You might be able to now if you have a team of what? 15. 15 is still a lot of people to work with, guys. Okay, but all of a sudden your team of five is going to jump to 15, is going to jump to 30, is going to jump to 90, is going to jump to 100. Next thing you know, you're at a group of 2,000, 4,000. And you're like, wow, what, what the heck just happened? So take the initiative, look in your downline, see who's working. Also, make sure your people know like you're there. Okay, people need to know, like, and trust you. That's when they're going to come to you. Okay, so step up to the plate if you see people, you see some of your leaders not leading, okay, because it happens and it's sad. That's those people who are not leading should really take that non leadership role because it's not fair to other people who are actually working and busting their butt to make something out of this business, okay? So, with that being said, if you see a leader who is not leading and you reach down to their team, and you're like, hey, I want to work with you, and that person doesn't accept your offer, that's on them. As a leader, the only thing you can do is offer your guidance and your mentorship, okay? The only thing you can do. If they don't want to accept it, it's on them. Don't feel bad about it. Don't hound them. They know where to find you. Literally, tell them, hey, when you do want to work, I'll be here. You can reach out to me, okay? So, don't let that get you in a slump because that used to like really hurt my feelings when people didn't want to work with me or when I was stood up on calls. You know what? At the end of the day, it's over. Move on. Move on to someone who wants it because I promise you, you're going to find that rock star or that person that wants it. And they're going to show up every second of every day. And you're going to know who those people are. Promise. Okay. So only work with the people that want it. All right. I believe Chastity came up with this phrase and it has stuck with me since literally when I was like a certified consultant 
watching these trainings, I was terrified to speak. And that phrase is create leaders, not leeches. Okay. And that has been the biggest thing since I started growing a team. Guys, unfortunately, you're going to have leeches. Okay. Some people just need more guidance and they want to be, they want to have their hand held the whole time. We're not doing that. We're not doing it. Okay. You as a leader, you do not owe your team everything. You do not. So when we say show up and lead, we don't mean kick, kick the rest of your life away to the curb and show up for your team. That's not what we mean. There still has to be, there still has to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Boundaries. Okay. There still has to be boundaries when it comes to leading. And so create leaders, not leeches. How do you do that? Okay. So how I personally do it, if someone is messaging me and asking me how much this warmer is, I'm not going to respond for a couple hours. Okay. Or I am going to respond and I'm going to say, Hey, you can find that on your workstation. Okay, or your PWS, or the catalog that you just got in your drawing kit. If someone asks me, hey, where can I find this? I'm gonna say, hey, if you go into the search tab on our team page and you type in bag parties or whatever they're looking for, every single thing that's ever been posted in the two and a half years that I created that group, it's gonna pop up, okay? So you can still offer guidance, but you don't have to give them the exact answer. Why do we do that? It might sound mean. It's not being mean because at the end of the day, the people who you hand feed, guess what? They're going to keep coming back to be hand fed. And I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not doing that. So we do not hold hands. We offer guidance. Okay. Um, and let's say I don't respond back to that person. Let's say someone's asking me, Hey, blah, 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 about the host to join kit. I'll give it a couple hours, and when I do respond back, I'll say, hey, did you find the answer to your question? 90% of the time, they say yes. The other 10% of the time, if they say no, I say, hey, well, you can find that here, okay? Show them where they can find it, because I promise you, if they really, really, really want the answer, they're going to go and find it, and they're not going to wait for you, and they're going to Google it. So, all right, and then along with this create leaders, not leeches, you need to have business hours and your team needs to know them, okay? You, your business hours need to be respected. I don't care if they're a night owl. If your business hours ended at five o'clock, they shouldn't be messaging you at midnight. It's, honestly, it's disrespectful. So your team needs to know that you have a life other than Cincy. Most of us have a family, whether you have kids, dogs, ferrets, I don't know where ferrets came from, but anyway. Um, we all have a life outside of Cincy, okay? So it's okay if someone messages you outside of your office hours and you do not respond. Do not feel guilty. Do not feel guilty, okay? So that is basically what I have. We have to train our people from the very start. Tagging is not leading, guys. Tagging is not leading. Um, and you know what, at the end of the day, that person you're leading, they have to be the one showing up, but you have to make the effort first. You are their leader. You decided that you wanted to grow a team. Once you make that decision that you want to grow a team, you're here to lead, baby. You're here. You're here to show up. Because if you don't show up, your team's not showing up. Don't come crying on the last day of the month that you're not getting paid a title because you don't have your team numbers. Guess what? Guess why you don't have your team numbers? because you haven't shown up and you're only showing up now because you want to get a paycheck. It's not fair to get paid off of people when you're, when you're not present all the time, when you're only present when you want to be, when you're trying to get that money, it's not happening. So build a connection with your people, train them from the start. Okay. If they don't want it, move on to someone who does. That's it. Leaders, not leeches. All right. Let me. I don't even want to pull my face up because I look so bad, but it is what it is. All right. So 
I'm going to talk a little bit about coaching calls. Guys, we're going to talk about why we do them, why I created them, and why we have to stop saying no one wants to do coaching calls with me. Do you want to know why nobody wants to do coaching calls with you? It's because either you just started them and you've asked five people um, or because you haven't been consistent with developing relationships with your team. And, you know, Ray Ray made a great point. Sometimes people are going to, I mean, we even have now um, coaching calls that'll be set up. They don't call us. Sorry. Bye, Charlie. Nah, we're not rescheduling for tomorrow. We're maybe next month. Like that's, that's the way that it is. And so I want to start by saying, you know, you're not good at them because you're saying that and you're not being consistent in them. And I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, coaching calls, it's a scary word. No, it's not. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You're not having a friend chat. You're not having to let me catch it, catch up and let's be best friends chat. You're having a business conversation. So listen, I don't care if you call them one-on-ones. I don't care if you call them brain boxes. I used to call um, those kinds of chats brain boxes. I don't care if you call them coaching calls, but I want you to understand that if you are getting on the phone with your team with absolutely no direction, no content, you have no idea what their numbers are unless you went and pulled them. I used to be that person before calls I would do, I would pull everything I could from that leader. And it's just not replicatable. You cannot do that with a huge group. And so um, when I created these a couple years ago, I really um, wanted to have a tool for you guys so you knew exactly what to ask these people. So first thing I'm going to say, if anybody on here is on Guide to Growth, please post the AIM trainings, okay? It is a series. There are multiple trainings on what is called the AIM coaching program. And it is a program that was created to help you guys develop leaders, develop leaders. So if you were saying that you can't develop leaders, my first question is, are you doing one-on-ones? Comment in the, um, Jesus, my phone. Comment in the te- in the thread right now if you do coaching calls with your team consistently. I mean, every month, not one month and then the next month. I want I want you guys to be honest. Every month. Okay, I just heard, saw a lead consultant. Kendra Ruth is doing coaching calls. That's why she's going to be a superstar director. The sooner you start them, the sooner you're going to build leaders. Okay? So I'm loving the fact, and, and guess what? If you're not doing them, let's be, guys, let's be honest with ourselves in 2020. Okay, we don't, we don't have time to say, oh, I didn't do them because I was sick. You weren't sick the whole year. Like, we got to start being honest with the fact that we just did not care. And if you don't care to develop your team, that's called you're not being a leader. So, first recommendation, watch AIM. It will get redone eventually. It's an old program, but right now that's not my priority. My priority is for you guys to watch the training and for you guys to use the form. So I'm gonna pull up a couple forms, um, well, all the forms. These are all in the Google Drive, as well as in the AIM program. They are literally underneath every single training. All right, and what these forms are, they are based on title. So we're just gonna pull up the lead consultant. And what you'll do is you will create your own forms. Now, listen, I know some people send it in an email. You can do that. But let me tell you something. You can't do that when you got a team of 5,000 people. So if you would like to send them emails and you think that you can remember in your brain everybody that emails you back and you're not going to get sidetracked by checking all your other emails, go ahead. But I'm going to tell you right now you need to go ahead and you need to learn what Google Drive is and you need to make your own forms. It is not hard. It'll take you about 45 minutes because you're going to need to go on literally YouTube or Google and you can search how do I create Google Docs, how do I create these forms, and that's that, okay? We've got to stop saying we can't do things simply because we haven't tried. And um, I know that may sound really hard for some of y'all to hear because some of you guys may be frustrated or say, Chloe, you don't understand. I understand because I created them. So I understand. Um, and, and what the issue is that I see 
with a lot of leaders. So this is a lead consultant form. This is a form they'll fill out before you coach them. The way all of us coach our people, work with our people, one-on-ones, whatever, okay? Um, before you get on the phone with them, they should be filling something out. And they should be filling this out for two reasons. Number one, they need to identify themselves before they even get on the phone with you what the problem is in their business, okay? That's what these forms do. So lead consultant, and literally, I have everything beautifully mapped out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these forms, you're gonna open another browser, and you're gonna create your own Google Forms off of these. No, you cannot copy and paste. It, or Well, you can copy and paste, but you can't just take this form. You need your own form because when they fill them out, it will go in your own drive. This is not hard. Don't overcomplicate a process that you literally need to learn how to do. And that another issue I'm seeing is people are, not only are they not watching AIM, but then they're saying they're doing coaching calls and they're not doing coaching calls. A coaching call is whenever you have a document that you can read, that you have had your downline fill out, okay? Like this one, and look at all the stuff on this. Guys, it's literally like we're handing you a silver platter of this is what you need to do to raise up leaders. And if you're not sending them something like this, you're wasting your time on the phone. I'm gonna be really honest, and it's just 100% not sustainable. I have about 30 people I need to coach this month, and I can't do that. I'm gonna have to cut about 10 people out, and that sucks. But I'm just being really honest with you guys, you're one person. So you need to get very smart about identifying who you wanna work with, which we teach you in AIM, um, and really tuning into, okay, what are, like, they need to fill out the form, and I know I've said it a hundred times, but this is critical. Even I see a lot of upper leaders, like, they're not sending forms to people. They're sending nothing, and you're getting on the phone to talk about what? What you remembered? What you had time to pull from the workstation? You're not going to develop a leader that way. You know how you develop a leader? You set the standard. You set the expectation. You say, you're going to get this form. I use Callan Lily, I can't, literally it's the worst name ever. I don't know who invented that name, um, but it's an app and you can schedule your calls. Literally, you send it to them, my people Friday, I have a lineup of who I've chose that I wanna coach this month. They're gonna get that Friday. They're gonna get their calls scheduled based off my schedule. When my calls fill up, they fill up. Um, so, lead consultant, you can see everything is starred, meaning when you make your own forms, you need to make sure you make every question a requirement. It is not optional. It is not optional. I did not send you a form for you to decide that you want to fill out some things. I used to have first and last name and the date of coaching call together, but people weren't reading and they literally wouldn't put their name. 80% of my leaders. So what did Chloe do? Now you put your first and last name and then you put when our coaching call is. Um, lead consultant, you can see here, do you know how to reach your next promotion? Isn't that important? If they don't know how to reach their next promotion, what are y'all going to talk about on that coaching call? Let's talk about the compensation plan. Let's talk about promotion 101s. Let's have you watch this training from Guide to Growth Week 4, right? So it's gonna give you a direction on what to talk with them about. What's your current PRB? What's your last month's PRB? They should be filling that out, not you. If they fill out their current PRB and it's the 15th of the month, and, they're, and this is a lead consultant, so this is a little different. If their PRB was $8, I would probably still work with them because you're not a lead consultant yet, but well, I lied. Yeah, you are a lead consultant. Let's back up. We're not doing a coaching call until you have 500 in, okay? It's not being ugly, it's called you're creating leaders. If you don't have your 500 in, you need to watch Guide to Growth Week 2, and you need to learn how to sell, because we're not gonna talk about how you need to promote to a lead consultant whenever you can't get 500 PRB, okay? Um, and then we have last month's PRB, because I want them to type out, what was it last month? I want them to reflect on what it was last month. How are you following up with your customers? How many recruits have you had last month and this month? How many active frontline? We're literally developing leaders right here with the lead consultant form. Everything that you would need to know about that leader is gonna be right here. So um, you guys also saw that we have some for all titles all the way up, 
all the way up. I don't know why. Okay, superstar director is there. Um, I know my superstar director is pretty well by now. I don't need to send them a form, but bet your butt, like if they were struggling or if something bad started going on, they're getting a form. We're not going to get on the phone and be buddy buddy. They would get a form if they were struggling in their business. Um, but what I want to recommend for you guys is to watch AIM. I cannot stress it enough. You guys can tell that I'm pretty hot about this subject, mainly because you're not being taught which really pisses me off that you're not being taught by your, by your sponsor, by your upline. You're not being taught by them to do this. You're being taught that it's okay. You don't need to do this. Guys, I was doing coaching calls when I had one consultant. It was called um, free conference call. That was before Zoom and all this. It was a 1-800 number, and it literally allowed me to do meetings with one person or two people, and it was like Zoom, but I started with one. If you're not gonna start with one, how in the world are you going to start and backtrack when you have a team of 50? Some of y'all got teams of 16 people and you've literally never done a coaching call. You've never worked with them. And we're not going to say, oh, they don't want to do them because that's just not true. The more you build trust with them, the more you develop a relationship with them, the more you develop belief in them, not only are they going to want to do a call with you, but they're going to beg to do a call with you eventually. It takes time. I've been doing coaching calls for three and a half, four years. I was doing them before none of y'all would do them. And I kept doing them when my own directors wouldn't do them. So I want you guys to think about that. You're saying, some of y'all I feel like don't do them because you're saying people don't want to do them. How would you feel if you had, I think we had 25 directors at that time? None of them, not one of them did it. Not literally not one. And I say that because you're the leader of the pack. I kept doing them. So they finally caught on and they're like, okay, well, Chloe's developing a lot of leaders this year. What are you doing? Well, I'm doing coaching calls. What? I'm doing coaching calls. So, and when you do your coaching calls, guys, literally what I do, you don't have to print it out. Um, you can get the Google Drive app on your phone. You can pull them up. It's glorious. It takes two seconds. YouTube is your friend. Get on YouTube. Learn how to make the forms. It's not hard but you got to do it. You got to learn. If you don't want to do the forms, I don't know what you're going to do. That's going to be sustainable. Um, but if you figure it out, let me know. But I'm telling you right now, some of y'all are doing, you email the form and I don't even know how they fill it out. And then they email it back. I'm, I don't know. But with this Google drive, they fill it out, click, click. As soon as they submit it, you get it back. I don't know an easier way or a more efficient way to do this. So, um, and when you guys are doing these calls, I want you to remember that being a leader is not easy. You're not here to be people's friends. It's great if, if you develop relationships. I have a lot of great relationships with a lot of my leaders, but they know when they get on a call with me, we're going to be real. Okay. I do 15 minute calls for lead for um, essentials to leads, stars and up. We do 30 minute calls because I'm developing them a lot more. Okay. So they're 15 minute calls, but as they get higher up, I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit more. I'm going to make sure I set action plans at the end. So when I get off the call, I always set a couple action plans, three, okay. One for PRV, one for recruiting, one for team. And, um, I also added on self-care because I think that's important early on to learn how to do that. I didn't do it for a really long time. Um, so yeah, so these are the coaching forms. Please watch AIM. I can't stress that enough. It'll change your business. It's going to change the way that you look at these calls. Um, and honestly, you know, a lot of people ask me, I, I was uh, doing a Zoom the other day with another superstar director, not in this group. And she was like, what are you doing? And I've been doing coaching calls. You know what I mean? It's, it's, there's a lot of things that I do that are consistent. But if you want to develop leaders, you have to work with them one on one. It really is sad to me that a lot of leaders think that doing a welcome post on a team page and tagging them in the pin post is leading. That's not even like in the ballpark. That's called like kind of doing your part and getting them excited and welcoming them to the community. That's literally zero leading. I just want to make that very clear. Leading is called behind the scenes. What are you doing when nobody's looking? How are you setting up these new consultants? Because your girl built a bookshelf yesterday for three hours by herself and cut my hands and did all the things because I needed to get Facebook parties set up. I didn't have to do that. I needed to do that. 
You know what I mean? Like I needed, I had a choice. I could have not done it, but then the four Facebook parties I have coming up, I would have been scattered and that's not sustainable. I can't walk around my house and do a Facebook party for forever. So I really want you guys thinking about how are you currently leading your team? Quit saying nobody wants to do coaching calls. Go back to developing a relationship with these people. They're human beings. They matter. Um, but you got to hold your, you got to, you got to start this now and you've got to really be firm on if they don't call me, we don't do the call unless I have really bad reception. So sometimes I will call them. Um, it just depends. Um, if they don't call, don't reschedule. Guys, your time is valuable. Quit thinking that you owe these people on your team your life. I'm going to be honest. I Y'all think you get a lot of texts all day? <laughs> you think that you're getting blown up? Okay. Come up here at our table and have no systems in place and have no business hours and then come and talk. We want to help you. We want to help you, and I cannot stress that enough. And I was that person for years and years that just literally was like, it's okay. And guys, don't do coaching calls with people that aren't producing. I said it. If you do a coaching call with them, number one, they're not meant to do every month. Quit coaching the same people every month. All four of us did that for a long time. Quit doing it. You don't need to coach every month. I do every two months, or if they promote, to SSC, director and above, I will coach them that next month if they just promote it. So we can go over some things. I'm not coaching the same people every month. How can I? I have 176 frontline. There's 30, what, 28 to 31 days in a month? So that's literally just frontline. So then how in the hell am I supposed to coach people that are second, third, fourth, fifth down that are rock stars? You can't. So identifying who you want to work with, which Chas and Katie are going to dig into is key. All right. Identify who you want to work with, build relationships with them, instill, instill some leadership, mentorship, trust within them. So they want to work with you. I'm going to be honest. They don't want to work with a half-ass leader. And I'm sorry. I had to say that with all the non-makeup in the flush face, but this is where we're at. Like, if you're gonna be hot and cold, nobody's gonna wanna work with you. Quit looking at them and look at yourself. That's all there is to it. And I hate to, hate to step on some toes, but they don't wanna work with you for a reason. It's either they're scared, it's either they don't care, and if they don't care, don't worry, boo, I won't ask you to do another call, or it's that they don't really trust you yet. You're not really that great. You're a mediocre leader. You only post on your team page whenever you're close to getting paid at title. And I'm saying that because we gotta wake up and realize that value in, value out. If they feel valued, they're gonna wanna work with you. The ones that are in that third category I just said. So start with one. There's a lot of people on here that do coaching calls in different ways. And um, in the future, we're going to do a really cool call on that so some of my directors and above can share what they do. There's never no one way to do things, but hear me when I say a coaching call is a coaching call. If you have team members scared to do a coaching call, then you need to have a conversation with them about what leadership is. Like you're not, we're not getting on the phone to be like powwow, friends, kumbaya. We're getting on the phone to make a plan for your business. I don't know what else that would be called, truthfully. So we've got to stop acting like they're scary and they're this and they're that. They're not. And if you, if you're, if you develop yourself as a strong leader and you listen to podcasts and you read the books and you do the things to develop, you're going to get secure about the kind of leader you can be. The reason you guys are not wanting to do these is because you're scared because you've never do, done them. Well, welcome to the freaking show. You know, so I want you guys to know you can do this, but you've got to start. You've got to watch AIM. Don't be this blind coach. Some of y'all are coaching people. You don't even know what you're doing. You don't even know what you're doing. You're jumping into the river and you don't even got no paddles. You don't even got no life vest on. And you're trying to coach people and you're not sending them a form. You haven't watched AIM because you've been sick for a year or whatever it is. You know, we've got to, we've got to be like, okay, if I'm going to be a leader. This is what leaders do. And this is what we do. So, um, if y'all have any questions, feel free to let me know. AIM is going to answer all the things, okay? Guess what? If they don't want to do a coaching call with you, don't do a coaching call. We don't even need to discuss that. If they don't want to work with you, bye. See ya.
peace. That's all there is to it. We got to stop overthinking this. And then you need to develop relationships with people that want that, that are worth your time. And one example I'm going to get, give you guys before who's next Chastity. before Chastity gets on. So we have a brand new director. That's my front line. Okay. Her name is Sarah Jennings. She's freaking awesome. Didn't even know her before she joined. She's a ray of light. She's amazing. She start. she per, um, recruited somebody named Jody who was a rock star. Okay. Sarah like wasn't ready yet to like dive into leading. She was super new when all this started. So what did I do? I started coaching Jody. What happened last month? Jody promoted to SSC, Sarah promoted to director. Okay. You have to make sure to, and they're going to talk about this, that you are identifying rock stars. We got to stop saying we don't know how to pull a report. And, and Katie and Chastity are going to bring it home for y'all because if you don't know how to click, report and performance tab and see who has high PRV, we got a whole nother issue. And it's called, you got to get into the workstation and read. Okay. It is not hard to identify who you need to work with. And there's going to be people who are not your front line that you need to help until that front line is either ready or until she's out. It's one or the other. They're either going to step up to the plate or they're going to peace out. And what's going to happen is if they peace out and you miss that second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth, and you didn't build that relationship, well, then you have their number. So why y'all aren't texting these people? I'm not even going to get into that. But you need to make sure that you're going down, you're coaching these people, always start with your front line, always start with your newest consultants, start with your rock stars, work with them, stay consistent, and I promise you, you will promote quickly. It's one of the reasons why Ray Ray promoted so quick. It's one of the reasons why Katie promoted so quick. Okay. So I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to put it. All right. There she is. Hey, y'all. So I was going to wear my Hey, All You Cool Cats and Kittens tank today, but my time just got completely away from me because my husband walked in the door 10 minutes before this training. So there we are. Um, I am going to talk to you guys today about something that is 100,000. I don't even know that what number I'm talking about at this point, but it is so like my jam. Okay. And I want to say that it's my jam because I can say that a lot of these things that I created when we're going to be talking about tracking leadership things, a lot of these things that I created, I created about a year ago. It was, it was like March, April timeframe last year that I finally decided, you know what, like I feel like a squirrel and nothing that is already out there in Scentsy is working for me. So I'm just going to have to freaking make it myself. And so that is where you guys have seen like the bajillion forms that are out there. Most of them I created and people have revamped them to make them work for you. And that's the number one thing that I need you guys to realize. What I show you is what works for my type A personality. And you have to realize that you can't just go and print out anything that I've uploaded in the Google Drive and make it work for you. Because what my leadership looks like as a superstar director is going to look different than your leadership as a lead consultant. Okay. So just remember that just because I'm doing 10 of something doesn't mean that you have to do that. That is because we've grown. Okay. So what I want you guys to realize, and I, Chloe has already been preaching on this, and I know I've said it before in this program that we've done. It doesn't matter what you do once. It doesn't matter what you do twice. It matters what you do consistently. And if you are not tracking your business, and your leader's business, you're not doing a good job. Yes, I know it's on the workstation, okay? But I want you to type in the comments over here if when you get on the computer and you start looking at stuff, then you go squirrel and go on Facebook or Instagram or start shopping or do all of the things. Like, cause I know for me, I will go to go and add something to my Amazon cart. And then I'm like, oh, I got a notification and I've got 16 tabs open, open. There's a sale at Carter's and my kids need new clothes. And so I'm all over the place. And so I have to have mine paper pencil, like in my planner. 
some people have taken these things that I've done and they've put it digital. And that is perfectly fine if that works for you. For me, the second I sit down at the computer, I'm gonna be doing 18 things at once. So I have these, okay? So when we're talking about tracking, that means you are tracking things in the same way every single month and you decide what those things are. So when I am talking, I'm gonna share my screen. I am gonna show you the leadership tracker that I, I sort of revamped this and this one's Ray Ray's, but ours are very, very simple or very, very similar. So these are the things that we do every single month. Now we haven't like, broken this down by days because that's just not the way my life works right now. I can't say I'm going to do something on Monday because who knows if my kids are going to burn the house down. Like I just never know. So these are the different things that we do. I'm not going to go and read those things to you, but the things that are consistent are recognition. Okay. I'm recognizing every single month i see you working now it seems silly to like go and write these things down but as a leader you're not going to remember to go and do all of those things consistently if you don't write them down you're just not you may do it on the first of the month tomorrow this month but then next month there's like a join special or i mean this month was freaking insane with join specials and all the things coming out like i wouldn't have remembered to do any of these things if i hadn't tracked it okay and so you can see that we've got our leaders posts we've got our directors calls like all of the different things that we're going to do you can go and look in the google drive to see that so that's the first thing that you need to be doing when it comes to tracking leadership okay now here is another checklist i'm not going to take um, credit for this i'm not really even sure who created this but this is something if you want to look at who is an up-and-coming leader and you need to look at your team so this is something that i'm not going to print out eight thousand of these for everybody on my team but this is something that i'm going to be doing a mental check-in when i'm pulling reports and katie's going to talk to you some more about reports here in a second but when i'm pulling reports these are some things that i'm looking at is this person active do they have the leadership minimum? Because right now it's the sixth. If somebody has already over 500 PRB, they're on my radar because they already have that leadership done or those leadership minimum numbers. They are leading from the front. It's the sixth. I have directors who wait till the last day of the month to put in 500, just being real. So if somebody's sponsoring a new consultant, this is also going into how you identify the people that you want to work with, okay? Active is very, very minimal, but as you, if you're just a brand new lead consultant, this is something that you need to be looking at because those people are working, okay? Um, people that are sponsoring, people that are earning shooting star in their first 15 days, those are people you want to talk to. Sensational start and first things first checklist. Guys, if you don't know how to go in your workstation and click the sensational start tab and ascend so that you can see if they have done their training, you need to get it together. And I mean, I'm just gonna say that like, guys, let me tell you something. Since he hasn't provided any of us any training on the workstation for reports, you wanna know where we've learned it? from playing with it around playing around with it and from Justin and from other leaders. That's where we've learned how to do the things on the on the workstation, not from anybody else. Justin blew my mind like three months ago when he told me all these saved reports that I could that I could do. So but things as simple as ascending in the workstation, it's not bad for you to go and reach out to somebody that's brand new or like They've been with Scentsy for longer than 15 days and they haven't finished their checklist. They have to do that. So making sure that you're looking at that. Now, paid at title and promotion watch. You need to be, you need to know your compensation plan so that you know what you're looking for. Okay. So this is just like a team check-in thing and that you can look at for that kind of stuff. All right. Um, now, something else that I do also to track, and let me see, my computer's like covering things up. This, and I'm gonna download it so it um, 
opens up correctly. This is something that I believe Michelle Hall created the original one. This is basically like a timeline, okay? You need to know your timeline as well, because if you're not tracking your stuff, just like we've said that Scentsy tracks stuff for you on the workstation, I know for me, I go squirreling. And you know what, I'm gonna open mine so that you can see what it looks like when it's filled out. Sorry for all the different folders, I really have a problem. I'm gonna go through this quick, I promise. Oh, there it is. And so a timeline I feel like is really, really important because you need to be looking at these things all the time so that you can see where you've grown and where you've stayed stagnant. And obviously I need to go in and fill in my 2020, but you can see that I was going through things from 2017 to 2018. You can look at these numbers and I can self reflect on that. You need to be doing the exact same thing. Now, um, this was what I was really actually talking about was the yearly stats tracker. This is something that I do at the very beginning of every single month. I'm tracking my PRV, my TWV, my GWV, so that when I pull that out, hard copy, I can look at, okay, well, how did I grow from March to April? Did my team die? What am I doing? What do I need to self-reflect on? So that's something you need to track for yourself. And then these, so one thing that I really love about the last incentive that we did with Scentsy, not the one right now, but the one previous, oh, I didn't mean to click print, um, was they rewarded us for behaviors that they wanted repeated. So, and my word this year was intentional. And so I had to get real intentional with how I was focusing on my people. And so what I actually did was broke this down even more. And like I said, I'm a paper pencil person. Some people are gonna think this is a complete like overworking. But like I said, when I get on the workstation, I can't handle all the things. So I write down my people that are essential to certify, that are essential that I'm trying to grow to certified. And at the beginning of every month, when I'm pulling reports, those people that had over a thousand PRV that have sponsored people, like I want them to get to lead. And you're not going to do that on accident. You're going to do that by being intentional with these people. And if you are not intentionally growing leaders, you're just not going to grow. And these are the things that I'm just writing down. And I want to hold myself accountable that I'm setting up a coaching call with them. Okay. And these are just like stupid little names that I came up for stuff. Shoot for star and then superstar sprint. And then I have one and most of this is for frontline or maybe some downline that their frontline is not working for working with them. But then I have the rising director checklist and these are, I put in this, anybody who is on my radar that maybe is not even in my downline. They may just be in my entire group. And so I'm just writing them down who their sponsor is because it's important to know, okay, well, this girl's got 5,000 PRV. Who in the heck is her sponsor? And so these are things that I use to choose who I'm working with because your girl used to just post, hey, who wants a coaching call? And I'm coaching with people who aren't working their business. And that's just not effective business running. Okay, and then the last thing that I have is just like a monthly stats thing. I don't know why it's, hold on, let me open this in Google Docs, it's being crazy. I'm gonna save these all in Google Docs, guys, instead of Microsoft Word so that nobody has an issue opening them. One reason why I do this is because when I go to do my team mail, then it's right here and I'm not going back and forth between the workstation. Um, I have printed my labels, but like when I go to write my personal notes, I have it. And then let's say I've scheduled coaching calls and somebody has to like cancel early or whatever. And I have a time slot available. What I can do is I'm going to go look at my monthly stats chart, which is right here. And if I don't have a coaching call set up with those people in some of these people, these are the first people I'm going to reach out to. And if you're an electronic person, you can totally pull this on the workstation. But I know that I wasn't being intentional with really seeing 
who was earning shooting star. I knew my front line, but I didn't necessarily know my downline. And so last month I had 11 people on my team, not in my group, earn shooting star. And only three of those were my front line. So I have some up and coming rock stars who are earning shooting star. And I need to keep an eye on these sensational start people. And then I also keep track of my top team page contributors. I just write that down. Yes, it's downloading crazy because of who it is. I write down my promotions because that helps me make sure that I'm going to go and send them their promotion mail. Right. And I want to make sure that if I hadn't sent them a text already, because we're, we're only one person, right? So you guys post on the team pages that people promoted. Sometimes leaders aren't even calling out their people. But on the first of the month, when I go to start pulling reports, I want to be damn sure that I've texted somebody that promoted last month. If I missed it in the middle of everything else, because we're human guys, it's happened. So I've done that. And then I've also kept track of somebody that was close to promotion. I have a place to write that down because sometimes their leaders aren't leading them. They don't even know who is their sponsor because that's an issue and we need to figure that out. And these are just things that help me wrap my mind around it because if I don't write something down, I'm not going to remember because I usually have two kids just harping in my ear and my husband like petting me, trying to get me to pay him attention. So it's something that I have to look at so I can be very, very intentional. I keep up with, if you keep going down, I keep up with my top group. Um, once you get a director underneath you, Chloe has always taught us that it's very important to still be going down into your group as well, because you have to, your goal should be to grow directors, not just first gen, second and third gen directors. And sometimes there's, there's baby directors that don't know what they're doing and that's okay. We've got to teach them. But if we see a rock star, I'm not going to overstep my director, but I'm going to text my director and be like, and I did this with Anna Watson. I said, who is Taylor? Because she is killing it. And she's like, oh girl, I know. And blah, 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 blah. Because I mean, that's just what we do. Right? So making sure that you have a way to track these people besides just pulling workstation reports because I don't know about you, the past couple of months on the very first, it's been like all day before reports are popping up. And then we'll have like a flash sale or something and all your reports are down and you feel like you can't do anything. And I mean, I don't want everybody to do triple the work, but this is what works for me. So find something that's gonna work for you that's gonna help you identify the people that you want to work with, okay? Because your time is valuable, and like I said, just do the things, be intentional. The last thing that I wanted to share really quickly about tracking, this is a form. Um, just look at it sideways, guys. It'll be fine because I don't want to waste everybody's time. But this is a form created by Fifi Fitzgerald, who um, we kind of like work together on this. This She just uses, I use a coaching form, a coaching call form that I use like over and over. I just write them all down. She does hers by month. So when she goes and plans out her month, guys, she plans out what her training is going to be, what her three types of recognition is going to be, and her communication. Communication means more than just their one-on-ones. And she's going to write down those people that she wants to work with. Okay. So like I said, there are so many different forms that you can use. You just have to find something that works for you, but you need to find something that is going to work for you consistently. So if what I have doesn't work, figure out a way to mold it to make it work for you. There wasn't anything out there like this. I don't know what everybody else in Sensi is even doing when it comes to tracking and leadership and all that. I really have no idea because there was just nothing there. And I just want you guys to realize the value in that. Um, it's just so, so important. And like Chloe has already said, you need to choose who you're working with and you're not going to work with somebody who's not showing up. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't do coaching calls in the first week of the month. My people know that. But at the end of this week, when I go to look at last month and see who I want to work with, 
I'm still going to be looking at this month's numbers too. And if they had 2000 PRV last month, but it's the 10th of the month and they're at zero. I, I mean, I just don't really, I don't want to spend 15 minutes on the phone with them if they don't know where their 500 is coming from, because that has to be a mindset shift that you know where your 500 is coming from. I know, I mean, I know what I'm going to be doing for next month for my 500 because I know it's bring back my bar and you should always be thinking forward. I already have a pre-order list of people that like some of those scents. I know exactly who I'm going to touch base with because I've built relationships with them. But that is all I want to say. You've got to track your stuff. If you're not tracking, you're slacking. Ha, I just came up with something cute and punny. Katie, I know you liked that. Katie is the queen of puns, but that is all I have to say. I love y'all. And if someone doesn't call you on their scheduling coaching call or scheduled coaching call, you say, peace out, Girl Scout. Had to throw that one in there too. I'm corny. I'm done. I love it. Look at you, Chas. I'm trying to get on your level, Katie, with the puns. Puns and memes are life. They are live. I'm going to share my screen with you guys and show you guys how I pull who I'm going to work with each month. I do that on the first when I do my recognition. I am one. I get so, this is how my brain works. Kind of like Chassie. I will do start something. And my husband's been home for two months. So he has witnessed me be insane and he doesn't understand. I will literally start something and be like, oh my God. I'll like look around I'm like let me do that real quick let me do that if it's I have to have a schedule that's how I, I function I don't do well out of schedule I just don't and this last two months have been crazy with you know Rona and all that stuff but when I do my recognition I pull who I want to work with e with each month I go ahead and pull 10 to 15 people it really depends on the month and what my personal business looks like first because my personal business is always going to come first I do not coach or work with my team at all the first week of every single month. That is dedicated to me, to my business, and all the things. I'll do my postcards and recognition and all that, but as far as working one-on-one, -on -one, I don't do that on the first week of every month. I coach heavy the second and third and light on the fourth week of every month. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to screen, share, share my screen with you to show how I pull reports. But before I do, I want to explain the importance because I did it wrong for a long time. I worked with people that were not working because I assumed my leaders had it. I assumed the people that were sponsoring and the people that were putting PRV in, I'm like, oh, they got it. They don't need me. So let me make this person that's about to go inactive work. Let me make them work. And it would drive me insane because it would be like, did I do something wrong that they're not putting their 200 PRV in? Let me get on the phone and like beg them to put their 200 PRV in. And I did it wrong for a very, very long time. And Ray was one of my first leaders that was with me and I didn't coach her. I barely, I was like, just let me know if you need anything. And like, that's pretty much it. Like, just text me if you need anything, because I was focused on the people that were not working. I did it wrong for a very, very long time. And you can't, the bottom line is you can't make people work. If they're not going to work, they're not going to work. And there's one of you, I think Chastity or Ray Ray or Chloe said that. There's one of you. And the problem with not working with your leaders and you assuming that they got it is they are going to burn out. They're going to burn out because they're not being recognized. They're not being worked with. They don't have systems in place. They're, they're squirrels. And most people, when they get to that place, it's easier to quit than push through if their why is not deep enough. So yeah, you're rock stars. And I've seen it with a couple frontline and a couple downline that were rock stars, but they got so overwhelmed because nobody worked with them and showed them how to put systems in place for their business. And I assumed they had it because they were rocking it out. And what happened, they got so overwhelmed and burned out and their why wasn't deep enough that it was easier to quit than push through it. So don't assume that your leaders have it because they don't, they need your support. So I'm gonna show you how basic, cause I do in depth, I do have in depth reports, but I'm gonna kind of just show you basic how I work reports. So I, let me pop y'all up. Can I pop y'all up at the same time? Let me see, gotta minimize you. 
No, there we go. So I'm gonna move this. It's first time screen sharing, so let's see. Okay. Can one of y'all like just unmute because I cannot, for some reason, my computer's slow. So just like, just tell me if you can see my screen, if I minimize you completely. I'll tell you. Thank you. All right. So this is last month. So I run reports on the first for the previous month. There is so, no screen. Huh? There is no screen. Have you pulled it up yet? Oh, crap. You know what? I didn't press screen share. Don't judge me. This is the first time that I've done screen sharing. Let me fix this. Lord. Screen share. Okay. There we go. Can you guys see it? Look at God. Ain't he good? Yep. Okay, so look he will won't he do it he will do it he will do it we're gonna figure it out um so when i do my recognition postcards i go ahead and start planning for the month who do i want to work with that month i don't just focus on my front line i work with my downline before i sh show you how i pull leaders i want you to look under your saved leadership report and this report sensational start essential to certified and shooting star click on this sensational start I had it up for a while, so it's lagging. The offense, Jesus. We ain't gonna have this. Okay. Look at God. So the first thing that I want you to look on this side right here, where it says training status. This is everybody in their first 70 days that's in their shooting star period. This is very, very important because you should not train anybody that has incomplete right here, point blank period. Like you're going to get on the phone and train them and they're going to ask you how to put parties in and you literally they need to do their first things first checklist. So when you pull up sensational start, it's going to show everybody in your team that's in their first 70 days. This is very important because if you pull this report and you see that their PRV is outrageous, which is right here. If you see that their PRV is 2,000, 3,000 in their first in their first 70 days, and they're already sponsoring like this Brandy Birch. She's already sponsored two people and she joined on April 20th. She's one I'm gonna want to work with from the beginning because she's already sponsoring, she's already certified. I would scroll my screen over, but that arrow's not there, but it would tell me what her PRV is right here. If I can Get that part of my screen, but it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. This is going to give you an idea of who's on fire in their first 70 days. And that's important because if you have somebody coming out the gate and they're on fire, they are going to be a rock star. If they're already sponsoring in their first 70 days and already certified and already doing all the things and putting PRV in, you want to put your focus on them. And it does not matter if they're in your front line or your down line. I have a front line that has been with me for over a year. She just sponsored her first person last month, and that person just sponsored three people. So who do I need to work with? Not my front line. I need to work with the person underneath of her because I messaged her. So I text her and I said, girl, your new person's on fire. And she said, yeah, I messaged her and told her good job. And I already know my frontline struggling to get her active every four months. So I'm going to start working with the girl she sponsored. So this is very, very important. So start here. If you've never worked reports, you need to click your shooting star button. Click your shooting star. Click your sensational start to see who out the gate is going to be your rock star. Then you'll go to start downline report. 
And I'm sorry this is lagging y'all, but like my computer crashed right before this call. So, I mean, it is what it is. Phone crash Friday, computer crash today. So it's fine, it's good. Everything's great. So I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna show you group because I do have a lot of directors for the sake of time. I'm just gonna show you group. So it's gonna show everybody in my front line, in my downline, in my directors group. So I am going to, you guys are so patient. And I feel my cheeks starting to get flush because I do not like people waiting on me. I'm so funny about that. So I'm the first thing I'm going to show you is top PRV, like for my whole group. Like when I decide I want to work with somebody, I look at PRV and I look at sponsoring and I keep a copy of the promotion chart because y'all, it doesn't matter. I've been doing it for three years. I can't remember like GWV, TWV to meet numbers. It's fine. It's fine. But I keep this right here because I want to know if I miss somebody last month and it's going to happen. I have a very large group um, or getting large, getting large. Um, I'm going to miss somebody. Generally, the last week of the month, I pull reports every single day to see who's close to promoting. So I can text them to let them know they're close to promoting because some of them don't know. And I need this chart because I text. Do yourself a grand favor and go to week three or week last week, week four, and cop that promotion chart, just put it in your phone. This way you have it so you can text it to your people when you're communicating with them so they know. Some of them don't know they're only one front line away from promoting, or they need $500 to promote in PRV, or whatever, they don't know, you can send them this chart. So the first thing I look at is PRV and identifying who is putting in high PRV. So you can kind of see like Caitlin's one of my frontline directors. She's going to promote to, super, to star director. But before she promoted to director last June, I worked with her heavy because she's always been a high PRV person. She's always been a high sponsoring person. I've been working with her way before she promoted to director. So you can kind of look down. Same with Chloe Patrick, who's in Aaron's group. Nicole McNair, who's under Caitlin. All these people. It's kind of funny when you pull reports if you when you start coaching and identifying your leaders and you work with them it's going to change everything for your business when you watch those people take your advice and blossom and bloom there's nothing like it there's there's no way to explain it until it happens to you so when i pull these reports and i'm like god i worked with jessica swarm and kayla baker i worked with all these people there's no greater feeling than knowing that this is when you pull reports, this knows you that you're making an impact into some, to people's lives and people's business. So when I pull these reports, I'm going to pick people like, who have I not worked with? Who have I not worked with? I'm very picky. I used to work with the same people every single month because, number one, I love talking to them. And if they ask, I'm a people pleaser. Like, I don't want to just say no. I'm getting better about it, but I'm a people pleaser. Like, I want people to be happy with me so I would never turn down coaching calls I'm very very picky now six a week on the second and third weeks second third so that's 12 and then light three to four on the fourth week so I'm going to identify people like who do I want to work with this month I'm going to look at high PRV I am going to look at GWV why is this important because the last week of April, like I almost had a heart stroke every single day because it was like two directors a day looking at these GWVs and I couldn't even keep up. You need to be looking at their GWV. Like if they're close to promoting, I know I just hit that twice, sorry. Computer's lagging. You wanna look at their GWV and look at this promotion chart, print it out so you have it. Look at this promotion chart and be like, look, Who's close to promoting in your group? That's who you need to work with. 
that's who you need to work with. Now, obviously, Chloe nailed it on the head. There's going to be people that don't want to work with you. There's people I scheduled last month that didn't call me. They didn't call. If they don't do their form and they call me, this is going to sound ugly. I don't answer. And then I politely text them and say, hey, you didn't complete your form. So I'm not prepared for the call to give you the best advice, but we can reschedule for next month. Please complete that form. Without that form completed, I really can't give you the most of my time and it's not going to be beneficial. That's not being ugly. Set that from the get go because we're not going to get on the phone. Those of you that coach with me early on, you know, we're going to talk for an hour and it ain't going to be about sensing for the first 30 minutes. No, you don't have that type of time. So look at their GWV. How close are they to, to promoting? Look at that. Look at their active frontline. If some of my directors are up here, they know if they were close to promoting to director, one of the first thing I said was, well, boo, you really need to work on your active frontline because somebody is very close behind you to hit director. And when that happens, that TWV is going to be pulled and you're not going to have that TWV and your active frontline is real low. So you need active frontline. You need all the things. So look at their active frontline. Look at their new recruits. Like, who is this? I know it's Jamie Edwards. I know it's Jamie Edwards because I think I messaged her every who had seven recruits? Nicole McNair had seven recruits. I coached her at the beginning of last month. And I, if Sarah's up here, y'all know I love y'all, so I'm not talking junk. But it took three months for me to get Nicole on the phone. And when I got her on the phone at the beginning of last month, I said, you really need it to get, get it together because you started on fire and you got burned out because you didn't have systems in place. And when you died out and took three months off, your team died. And once your team dies, you cannot put, you cannot get it back. I hate, that sounds ugly, but it's just like pouring water on a fire. You're not going to be able to relight that fire once you dumped water on it and you put the fire out. So we got on the phone and talked and she, look, 4,000, almost 5,000 PRV, seven recruits last month. Like she got it together. So you need to be looking at these people that are recruiting and what I also do too, which is a little bit more in depth, I click in if they're recruiting, I wanna see are those people hitting shooting star and certified. Like I drill into their downline to see like, okay, you've been promoting, I mean, you've been sponsoring for the last four or five months heavy, but you're not promoting, your GWV is the same, your TWV is the same, you're at the front lines the same. So yeah, you're sponsoring, but obviously you're not coaching. You're missing that third leg because none of those people are producing. And hear me, if you had the time to have a sponsoring conversation with somebody and you sent them your PWS link to get them to join, you have time to train them. Like you did all that work to get them to join. You, you built that relationship with them. You sent them your join link. You did all the things and then they join and you're like, okay, all right, let me tag you in this and send you this and let me know if you need anything. That's not training them. And I say that because I've not always been the best at training my frontline. Now I stay on top of my new recruits. I like hound them. Like every two or three days, I'm like, where we're at? Like your kit's coming. Did you do your, when's your launch party? Okay, you need to take your testers to work, like hound them. So yeah, these people might be recruiting, but you really, the more often and more frequent you look at these numbers, you're gonna get to know your people. And the other thing I'll say is these people, these high PRV people in your group or people recruiting, you need to click on their name and add their phone numbers to your phone. Add their, I'm telling you, there is nothing like getting a voice message from a stranger. They hear your excitement. They hear and they know that it took work instead of clicking on their name and pressing the Facebook Messenger button. I said that because I used to Facebook message everybody because I didn't want nobody to have my phone number. But ever since I switched that, oh, I was like, Chassie, you don't got manly. Hey, Chase. Ever since I started personally messaging these people, it makes a difference to them. They know that you're recognizing them. They know that somebody is watching them and it might not be their sponsor. They may not be getting all that they need from their sponsor. So you, as, as their upline, 
reaching down to them to send them a simple text that says, hey, I'm proud of you, you're doing amazing, you could impact their business. And I say this a lot, you have the power to empower. Everything you need is right here in your performance tab. You don't need anything else. You can literally, everything you need, so stop saying you don't know who to work with. You can't control if they don't message you back. I have that happen. They don't message me back because they don't know me from Adam, but you know what that means? I need to continue to build that relationship with them and I need to continue to text them and I need to continue to voice message them and build that relationship. And once you, the beautiful thing about this, once you coach these people, when I coach them, if they don't have their own team page, meaning if they're not one of my directors, if they're one of my downline, I tell them, will you start sharing on the team page what you're doing? Because you're rocking it out. And the beautiful thing in that is the, uh, the rest of our team learns from somebody new. They're sick of hearing us. They are sick of hearing our voices and seeing our posts. There's beauty in watching your people step up to the plate to lead. So you have that power, whether you think you do or you think you don't. I used to be very meek and would never do get on this video ever. Like I'm real introverted until you get to know me. That, that was pulled out of me. That, was, that doesn't come naturally. That was pulled out of me. So you have the power to pull that out of these people. So pull tonight, one of your homework assignments is to go to your performance tab and click start downline report and pick who do you want to work with. Look at last month, look at April and say who rocked it out last month? Who was close to promoting last month? I mean, I wrote down, I had like two sheets of paper of everybody promoted. I couldn't even freaking keep up. It was ridiculous. And then message them. And let, if you they didn't promote last month, message them and say, girl, you were 100 GWV from promoting to star. You were one active frontline from promoting to director. And that sounds silly, but I, I stopped it last month. I stopped it for my own eyes. I thought that it was two array rays, like one active frontline. One active frontline of 500 PRV from promoting to director. I mean, at the, the end of the day, those that want help are gonna ex accept your help, but they need to know that you have an open door. If you don't have an open door, they're not gonna knock. They're not gonna knock. They're not gonna come to your door if they're not comfortable with you. And one thing I had to realize was my downline does not know me. They know their sponsor. So I'm a stranger to them. So my posts on my team page, they don't make a difference. My live videos, they don't make a difference because they don't have a relationship with me. But once I developed a relationship with them outside of the team page and via their phone number and texting them and them hearing my voice, my excitement and my voice, that's how you develop a relationship. And Chloe nailed it on the head. These are people. These are real people so think about I'm, I'm not saying since he's not a real job but think about at your real job if your boss that never you didn't know who your boss was but they would send you emails you never saw a face you never heard their voice they would just send you emails of what to do they would just send you emails but there was no connection but if your boss came into your workplace and worked right beside you and got to know you as a person and got to know your kids. What did you, what do you like to do for fun? What do you do when you're real? What do you do as your full-time income? You're going to relate and you're going to open up and then they will be comfortable to come to you to be mentored. So if you're in a place where you you say that you're doing coaching calls, but nobody's taking those coaching calls, sit back and build relationships because that will come. And don't call them coaching calls anymore. I literally message these people and you know what I say to them? I want to get on the phone with you next week. Will you get on the phone with me next week? I see so much in you. You are rocking it. You're on fire. I want to get on the phone with you. And you see if I would have messaged them and said, hey, would you like to do a coaching call with me? That sounds, sounds scary AF. That sounds scary. Do you want to do a coaching call with me? That's scary because they don't have a relationship with me. But when I started saying, I want to get on the phone with you, that makes them feel special and important, especially if that's not my front line. 
especially if it's not my front line. If it's, if it's my downline, that makes them feel so special and so important that I said, I want to get on the phone with you. And I'll tell you, if you're fire, if you're on this call and your fire is dead, like you have no motivation, like you are just checked out, you need to start doing coaching calls. These, when I do coaching calls, when I get off, I am lit. Like they think I help them, but they help me just as much as I help them. I am lit because they're excited. They are excited and they are pumped. And there is nothing more exciting than working with excited people. There's nothing more that lights your fire if you work with people that are equally excited about their business. So pick the right people. There's only one of you. Don't do it wrong. You can't make people work. Like if you're trying to do a coaching call with somebody that's about to go in active, let them go in active. 200 every four months. Come on, let them go in active. Let them go. Let them go. Put your focus on the right people. And you're going to watch your business shift. I didn't promote leaders for a long time. And now a lot of my frontline are hobbyists and that's fine. What does that mean? I need to recruit and I need to recruit the right people. And in the meanwhile, while I'm doing that, I need to start digging into my downline to work with the people that are hungry. You don't know what kind of impact you're going to have on these people's lives. So dig down deep, dig down deep and start small. If you have not coached, do aim, pick one or two people, start small. But I mean, starting is better than not doing anything at all. You have to be willing to start. You have to be willing to start and takes consistency. They're going to see that. And do not post on your team page who wants to do a coaching call because everybody that's not working is going to comment. I'm telling everybody that's not working is going to comment. And when you get on the phone, they're going to say, nobody wants to book a party with me. I promise you that's going to be the very first thing they say. Nobody wants to buy from me and nobody wants to book a party with me. And that is not worth your time. That's not worth your time. So pick the right people. And when you watch those people that you start coaching up, change everything for their business, your fire is going to be lit and you're going to realize you're in the right place and that leadership is for you. I didn't think leadership was for me until I watched Ray Ray change her life, Aaron change her life, Stacy changed her life. I did not think leadership was for me until I watched people's lives change. So do it. Do it. I think that's it. And that's all I got. All right, all right, unshare your, or stop sharing your screen and then I'll make us big. All right, cool, sweet. Okay, so now what we're gonna do over the next 20 minutes, which is super exciting, and also um, Queenie, who is one of my mentors outside of Cincy, she wanted me to make it very clear that I also didn't train her, which is very true. Um, or coach her. I didn't train her, but I did not coach her. She didn't need coaching. And there's a lot of you guys, honestly, that promoted quickly that didn't need coaching. And um, that's a testimony of how hard you work, by the way. So there's that. But just because people need coaching, help, you know, everybody's, everybody's different. Everybody has um, a different speed as to how they work. And so <laughs> she, I called her out. But it's true. I didn't, I didn't coach her. But um, just know that everything all, all of us said, um, I'm telling you right now, if you start implementing this, your business will change. You don't implement it. You don't start with one. You decide you want to be a victim instead of a victor. You're going to struggle. That's really all there is to it. It's, it's very simple. So um, Ray, uh, Chas, and Katie. So we got a lot of really good questions from you guys um, regarding struggles you're having and anything leadership. So, all right. Um, do one of y'all want to answer one of them? All right, Chas, I'm trying to unmute you. I don't know why. There we go. Okay, sorry. So the way that you shared it, we had to like screenshot it to each other because it like- Sorry, Justin opening. did that. But you know, this is, it, Chas, you already know. So just- Justin? What did I do? If you <laughs> You're can, fired. He doesn't know what he does. So we're just going to act like he emailed what I asked him to and we're just going to roll with it. It's it, yeah. Okay. It's fine, Justin. Everything's fine. Okay. So somebody said motivating my team to consistently work guys, you cannot motivate your team. You're never going to be able to create 
the motivation. You can create momentum. You can lead the way. You can be on fire, but you cannot make somebody work. So my biggest tip to you, if you feel like your team is dead and nobody is motivated, stop wasting your time on trying to pull people out of the trenches and go find some new fresh meat. And I don't say fresh meat like, you know, I'm talking about feeding husbands to the tigers, it's fine, but like you've got to go find some new people because if you're, those new people are going to be what lights your fire and those new people are so excited that that is what is going to pick up momentum. So don't stress. I mean, I, you have to be active and you have to show that you're excited and passionate and that you're motivated to work your business. But if you're consistently reaching out to somebody and they're just making excuse after excuse, don't waste your time on them. It's not enough time. Um, one other thing is somebody said, um, having a good system to train your new teamies. So I created a new consultant checklist. It literally has 12 little check boxes over the top. I have it right here in my sponsoring part of my, um, or actually it's in my coaching section of my planner. And this is shared with you guys. So every single time I sponsor somebody, I write their name down. And then these are all of these different touch points. Okay. Some people break it down by days. I don't break it down by days because my schedule isn't a day by day thing. I have created videos that my team can use. Chloe, Katie, Ray Ray, all of us have created videos that our teams can use. For the love of God, use them. We didn't just create them for our front line. Now that doesn't mean that's all you're doing. Hey, watch Chloe's video because some people will say that and they don't have a damn clue what we even said in that video. Let's be real. You know, some of that, some of you, that's you, but that's why we created those guys because you have to work smarter, not harder. Right now we're in a join special. Your girl has upped her sponsoring to four new teamies and three reinstatements. I can't train all of those people at one time. Like, I mean, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to work smarter, not harder, but because I have this system, I know who I've talked to about their um, launch party and if they've made their list of people. So Create something that's going to work for you. If you don't have a system yet, I would suggest just using one of the checklists that I have shared. And then as you go through, you're going to find what works for you. But you've just got to create some type of thing that's going to help you do that. Okay. Um, just remember to work smarter, not harder. That is why those systems were created. If you're sponsoring a bunch of new people at one time, do a Zoom and train them at the same time, especially right now with social distancing. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plan a Zoom that works for me, and I'm going to say, hey, this is the time I'm getting on. Please come, and I'm going to work, work you through and train you the same way I would anybody else, okay? I'm going to let somebody else talk so it's not just me because I'll talk forever. Yeah, and there's, there's a crap ton of questions. So, Ray Ray? I was going to um, answer. The, someone asked a question. It says, um, I need to take lessons in making sure to set business hours so I devote the correct attention to business and personal life. I just need help with this. Um, so there's no like, there's no specific answer for that. Um, that's going to be dependent on what you have going on in your life. So I know like all four of us, for instance, like we work completely differently. Um, and you know, I work completely differently now that I'm at home every day seven days a week than I did when I was working full-time as a nurse. So it's really going to be dependent on what you have going on in your life. Um, for example, when I did work full-time, you know, my business hours for, were seven, I think it was like seven to five or something like that. It's different now, but I was working when I was sitting on the toilet at work, my lunch break, um, I would work in more of increments than I do now. And that's just what worked for me. But I would say like, don't take personal time away from your family. Like your, you and your family come first always. And I think a lot of people get that confused with when they, you know, become a business owner is 
you know, your family always comes first. So never put your business before your family. Yes, you're going to have to do stuff, but make time to do it. Use that time and be intentional with it. Get stuff done so then you can go back to your family. Okay. So that's, that's going to be totally dependent on what you have going on, going on in your life, what your life looks like. Do you have kids? Do you have dogs? Does your husband work full time? You know, like what does your job hours look like? Your full time job? That's, that's really, you're going to have to sit down and dig deep and be like, okay, what's going to work for me? And guess what? The first thing you try, it might not work for you. Then you're going to have to revamp it again. We have all revamped our business hours multiple. So that's, you just have to dig deep into that. Katie? I have two. So the one where it says participate, participation on team page, stop banking your effectiveness on how, your t how active your team page is. So many of you guys are saying I'm a bad leader because nobody's commenting on my post. Stop doing that. I was one that did that. Stop doing that. Build relationships off of your team page and your team page will pick up, pick up automatically. But so many of you guys are saying I can't be a leader because they're not commenting on my post. They might not be seeing your post. I had to, I had to have a reality check with myself because I was frustrated with my team. How can I reach my team and coach my team effectively off of a team page? So I started doing every Monday emails and I've seen, I have seen a big difference since I started doing every Monday emails for my team with three things off the three legs of success. And then when you build relationships off of your team page, they're going to start stepping up to your team page and it's going to get active, but it's not going to be automatically. So stop banking your effectiveness of a leader. Facebook can be deleted like this. That doesn't mean you're a bad leader. That means they don't feel like commenting on your post. Literally, I do it all the time. I mean to comment and then I, I'm like, oh, well, let me do this and I forget to comment. It's fine. It's fine. So stop worrying about participation on a team page. And that's when you need to start pulling leadership qualities out of other people and delegating them to share on your team page. So when you're pulling reports and somebody has sponsored seven people, you need to go to that person and say, I need you to do a live on our team page on how you sponsor seven people. And then they're going to do it over and over again because they feel valued because you put value into them to make them feel their growth, and you empower them and they're going to do that consistently. The second thing I saw somebody ask was finding new people to sponsor. So many of your business problems, PRV and sponsoring will be resolved if you party. If you party, PRV, customer base and sponsoring, the more you party, the more people you're going to have to pull from to have sponsoring conversations with. So party, party, bag party, online party, whatever that looks like for you, do it. I've been partying since the same month I joined and every person, just about, not every single one, but most of them came because I met them through a party and I followed up with them and I took care of them. But so many of you guys are struggling to get active or get 500 in. If you would consistently party, those issues will resolve itself and how do you party it's very simple you just need to ask you literally need to ask all you need to ask is do you want to get some free stuff that's it i messaged four people today I had no parties booked for me my own fault because i got comfortable my prv being high not partying and i realized i'm like that's okay, that's okay. i need to party and i messaged four people and i said hey girl just wanted to see if I could drop a bag off if you would like to get some free stuff this month. And everyone said yes. I literally just asked them, do you want to get some free stuff? That's literally all I asked them. When I get them in person, we'll go in debt. All I need them to do is say yes, yes, I want to get some free stuff. But so many of your issues with sponsoring or PRV will be resolved if you would just party. Just party. And party hard. Party hardy. Yep, y'all got a party. And one of the things that I, one of the questions I loved um, is somebody asked, what is the biggest thing that you wish you knew when you were a lead consultant that you know now that would have changed your business for the better? Man, there's a lot. Number one, take no shit. Don't bow down to people. Don't let them make, don't, don't let, don't let other people in Cincy or your family, if they don't agree with your business, don't take it. 
I took a lot of stuff the first two years of my business. It's sad, actually. Um, you need to listen to what all four of us are saying and realize that you're worthy. You can do hard things. Um, I have two other tips I'm going to give you about the biggest thing, but you're worthy. You can do hard things. And people that are not wanting you to win, whether it's within this group or somewhere else, they are not our people. And it is okay to set up boundaries and to claim that. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to end up just being this really stressed out leader. Um, it's okay if your sponsor sucks. Out promote them. End of story. Um, it's okay if you don't get along with your sponsor. Don't talk about them. Just work hard. Um, and the other thing I want to say about this question is um, I wish that I got systems in place sooner. All of you have systems. So those of you, there's several questions on here. I need a system for training my team. I need this. Guys, you simply have to click the pin post on your leadership pages because if you did that, every pin post we have has every single system Chastity Robinson has ever created. So if you, like, like Katie says, if you're going to like come to the table but not prepare the meal or whatever, what are you going to eat? Like you have to literally, you need to use the resources we give you. So I wish I had systems. I wish that I didn't take so much shit from people that didn't matter. Um, I wish I had boundaries in place for uh, my business, my personal business. I wish I had more boundaries in place for um, my business hours. I never used to have that. And right now I'm going to be honest with y'all. I love y'all, but too many of y'all are texting me after three. My business hours are eight to three. Yeah. period like period so please respect that I'm a human being with two young children and a husband that owns two businesses that he can't even work right now please respect business hours please respect them um and coaching calls I wish that I started those sooner you guys have access to that one-on-ones coaching calls like Katie said everything she said do you realize every one of you I've coached that's how I coach you I literally pull out the best in you and say, I want to work with you. That's what I say. I don't say I want to do a coaching call until we've done about four. And then it's, hey, I'm going to send you my link. I want to coach you. But you want to coach this month? That develops over time. But of course, you're not going to say, hey, let's coach. Like, that makes no sense. You're going to say, I want to work with you. Okay? Treat others the way you want to be treated. So I love that question because if I had systems, boundaries, and coaching calls, not only would my marriage have been a lot better the first three years of my business, but I would have felt a lot more confident. You're confident. And if, if people are telling you that, that you can't do this or you can't do that, or you have this negativity, like Ray Ray always preaches, you're just in the wrong circle. If somebody doesn't want you to win, listen, if they don't want you to win, you're in the wrong circle. It's very simple. If they are, if you get that feeling right here and you're like, man, something's wrong, you're in the wrong circle. It's very simple. Figure that out early on. We're not here to please people. And then um, there's so many questions. My favorite thing about being a leader is watching y'all's lives change. Watching, um, I can't even talk about it, but like when you watch other, one of my biggest things when I retired, I was so nervous because I was like, what if I fail? What if all this happens? And um, God kept telling me, if you don't do it, you're not going to be able to, to create other people that feel like they can do it. And then we've already had two people retire, two of them on here right now. And um, Chastity's on her way to making her plan. And so um, that's hands down my favorite part. I, the money's great, but I don't give a damn. I could pay my bills many other ways. It's not about the money for me. And when people come at me and say, oh, you just get paid this off me or that, they're, they're so confused. Yeah, it's, you're so confused. It's not about that for me. Um, so that's my favorite part about the business and, um, creating a team page. Now I think I, I'm a firm believer on creating a team page when you're a star consultant, unless you're a star consultant with like three people and you're one of those three people. Wait a minute. Okay. Um, I would say, wait till you have like five, six people, then you want to carry it from a group message over to a team page. Okay. The reason you create a team page is because when you're a star, you're two from director. So you don't want to double promote that like ha like that happened last month with six people in this group. They double promoted. We had several triple. You don't want to double promote to director and you don't have a team page. It's just not cool. You know what I'm saying? That's just not good. It doesn't look good. It's not, you're going to be frazzled. You want to get yourself in the position of leading. So that's why I say at star, create a team page. 
unless you have a team of three, including you. I have one of my friends who just promoted to star has a team of three. I said, wait a minute, let's like get the systems in place, get these things in place, and then we'll, we'll do that. Um, do y'all have any other questions that y'all want to answer on here? Yeah, Ray. Okay. So the other question I wanted to just touch base on, someone said, how do you motivate your team? Guys, you can't, okay? You can only motivate someone so much. And honestly, like we're all trying to motivate ourselves. We're all trying to motivate ourselves, okay? And so please don't think like if your team is not motivated, that it's because of you. Yes, you need to be showing up. That's going to be a part of motivating them, but you can only motivate someone so much. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, they have to be willing to take that step forward and say, "Okay, I'm going to do it." Okay? 10% of your team is going to work. So, I hear it all the time from people. My team page is, you know, has like dead, you know, crickets. Okay? Well, you have a team of 10. 10% of 10 is one person. That's one person. I know you have one person on your team doing all the work. That is normal, okay? Our team pages might look like they're popping, but that's because we've grown them to a large amount of people. And guys, if you, if you compare the amount of people that are participating compared to the amount of people in our groups and in our teams, it's nothing. It is that 10%. So do not take it personal when your team seems like it's dead, when in reality it's not. It's just the average 10% of those who are working, okay? So you cannot motivate everyone in your team. And listen, if you're trying to motivate everyone in your team, you are going to eventually drown. I've been there. I have tried to motivate and save every person that has joined my team in our group, and it's not sustainable. And that's when, you, that's when you are going to fizzle out and want to give this business up, okay? So do not waste your time trying to motivate everybody and their mom and their grandma and their dog. It's not going to happen, okay? Yeah, and y'all just need to listen to my live. I did a live on Guide to Growth on this. Motivation is, is not a thing. Um, that's not sustainable. And um, if you guys are working because, because you get motivated from your director, you're just going to struggle. You're not going to, you're not going to be around very long. Um, it's just not going to happen. Chas, I'm trying. Okay, good, good. You're unmuted. Go. Okay. So I know that we've went over guys, but I just want to talk about this real quick. This wasn't really a question, but this was, somebody said, not feeling like I'm showing slash training them enough. Like I'm not enough of a leader for them. This makes me so emotional. And, you know, I've been getting emotional on every damn call and I don't know what it is about you guys in this program, but you guys are changing lives and you guys are making me emotional and like, I don't cry. So it's really kind of crazy that I've cried like every freaking week on this program, but it's because God's moving. That is Satan right there coming out in your words. That is Satan telling you that you're not enough of a leader unless it's you feeling guilty because you know you're not doing the things that you need to do. So you need to ask yourself that. Are you doing what you feel like you should do, what we say you should do? Or are you getting in your feels and letting Satan win? Because Satan is always going to try and take you down when you're growing. Satan is always going to fight so hard when you're on the verge of a breakthrough. And I'm going to tell you what, all four of us have went through hell and back here recently with things that have been going on in our lives. And God is providing for us through all of this. Satan always fights that hard when you're on the verge of a breakthrough. So don't you dare tell yourself that you're not doing enough. Because I'm going to tell you right now that the four of us also feel like we're not doing enough daily. Jesus, every day. Literally. Every day. We talk to each other every day and we ask ourselves, are we doing the right things? Are we doing enough? What did we miss? What else can we do for them? Guys, we question ourselves. So, but the only difference between us and between anybody else that's on this call right now 
is that we just don't give a damn anymore if somebody's going to question whether or not we're doing enough because deep down we do know that we're doing enough and that's just satan in the back chirping trying to tell us that we're not doing enough but we know that we are we know that we are giving everything that we can to you guys and if you are doing the same thing i don't want you to beat a dead horse i don't want you to die for your team but I want you guys to realize that if you are showing up and you are doing the things that we have been teaching you through this program, you are doing enough. If you are posting on your team page and showing how you're working, if you are showing up for your team and you are training and I be damned, you're on this call right now. There is a reason you are not here on accident. And this is all God leading me to say all of this right now. Cause I was not trying to get emotional tonight, but stop questioning your worth. Stop questioning your value. You have the resources and you have, you're here for a reason. And you have the impact, you have the power to empower people, guys. And that is like, I'm literally going to get that posted on this wall somewhere because you guys need to realize that this business has 100% changed my life and I was that girl. And I think that's why I get so emotional because I was that girl that didn't feel like I could do anything good. That I didn't feel like I can make anybody's life any different. I didn't even feel good enough to dang like to do anything. I can't even come up with an example right now, but guys like you need to know that you are enough. And if you don't know it yet, you keep doing the things and you're going to feel it eventually. And I don't want you to think that we're sitting up here like not questioning ourselves because we do every single day. But you guys showing up and doing the things, that's what feeds us. And that's what like lets us know. And that's like a God moment for us because God's letting us know that all of this hard work and all of this stuff that we're doing matters. And I'm done, but I just like. I can't with you. Heart. You're way it was just on my heart. This is too much. Everything she said is so true, though, y'all. Um, I'm gonna share this with y'all on Friday. I just had a really bad day, and I was sitting in my kitchen, and I looked at my husband, and I said, "I'm gonna be real with y'all." I said, "I can't do this anymore." I was like, I "Can't do Cincy anymore." I said, "People are betraying me." I was like, "I'm good to these people, and this is what happens." I was like, literally, like why is God doing this to me? Like, what did I do to deserve this? And Justin was literally like, don't get it twisted. Pretty much. He was like, don't get it twisted. Like God is, is blessing us. It's just the enemy trying to come in and through people, the enemy comes in through people. That's just what he does. It's very easy for him to come in through people that are vulnerable. And so, you know, just remember to stay focused and to take a minute when you need to take a minute, leadership is hard. If it was easy, everybody would do it, right? Um, do what 99% of the world won't do so you can have what 99% of the world doesn't have. And it's not easy. So just know that we, all four of us have gone before you. And one thing that I used to do um, before I had any SSDs is if I went through something hard, I would get it tattooed on my body. So everybody goes through different things. So I have words all over my body. A lot of people don't know that there are different words like free and move and scripture and stuff like that. So when I went through something hard or like there was literally a point in my life where I literally could not like move. So I got it on my arm so I could see it every day. So just remember that, you know, like Chastity said, you guys are in this group for a reason. And I firmly believe that. And this group is blessed. That's why you're called anchored sense based off of the scripture um, Hebrews 619. So, you know, that's just the way it is. And we are so excited to, um, be a part of, of y'all's lives and we just love y'all. So Ray, Ray, Katie, are y'all good? All right. Cause we went way over, but you know what? <laughs> we don't really care.